Welcome to the Dive In Live show. Welcome, Sydney. Hey, man. How's it going? Yeah, good. Glad to have you on. <laughs> yeah, so, man. Happy as well. They're in the snowy Berlin, huh? I understood. Uh... Yeah, man. The weather is super weird at the moment. Every day is different. Today was snowing in the morning, then sun, then snowing again. <laughs> you, you really don't know how to how to go out, what to wear or something. You know, you just... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I heard, the, lost. I heard the same in Holland that this was like uh, they had hail, you know, like really big ones. And mm -hmm. then at some point, uh, it's like five minutes later, there's sun out, and you're like, oh, it's gonna be a pretty nice day after all. It's weird, yeah. 
<laughs> but in the Netherlands, you it's always like that all year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. But it's like sun and then raining, and in the summer as well, you never know. Yeah, I was checking out the rainy days, uh, 145 or so, 150 rainy days. Because I'm looking, of course, here in Valencia, I was like, okay, how many rainy days? Like 45 or something, <laughs> 60 years. So. Yeah, yeah so that's <laughs> nice. So we got a bunch of people watching. Nice. Everybody's checking in. No mind from Liverpool. Super cool. And uh, I, ca I guess we're going to see a lot of people from the UK as... Uh, as for both house heads and houses, uh, really big in the UK, of course, so that's nice. And um, yeah, man, I'm really excited to have you on. You know, as I told you before, mm -hmm. that I've you know I've been uh, back in the day. I used to listen to House Lesson a lot. You know, really like that uh, that track. <laughs> nice, but, man. Yeah, probably the, the first the first track. You know, that back in the days I was making was in this kind of genre, yeah. which gets uh, kind of a revival now, more or less. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah, man. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be on the show as well. I was following um, the the ones with Joko. It was really fun to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So I hope uh, I can I can fulfill your expectations. <laughs> yeah, I think it will be fine. You know, at least uh, you got a lot of support from Brazil and from uh, here in Sao Paulo. Also Brazil. We got Portugal in the house. Super nice. So I, I'm guessing we're just gonna hang out and talk music and. You know, like we did uh, earlier the week uh, when we had a call, you know, we can talk about the studio and about uh, the stuff you do for the Mart. So, so yeah, I'm curious to all these things, you know, and uh, um, yeah, how about the studio? Is this your, uh, uh, the, uh, the place it's, that's going to be uh, re revised sort of like sound wise? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the stuff that I have in here now, the um, acoustic treatment, um, I have this for a really long time already, I think for like, uh, four or five years yeah so um and they are still from my old studio which is way smaller than this one so i only have a few bass traps and some diffusers the back and only two um bass traps on top yeah so th there's missing a lot of um yeah acoustic treatment so i'm most of the time at the moment i have to i have to mix my tracks with headphones which is um, a little bit annoying i think because I don't know. I think it's just more fun to to mix with um, speakers. with proper speakers. Yeah. yeah, I have the same because I'm now on the headphones, and I've mixed a few tracks, and I use Sonoworks for this, and it's nice. Uh, but also, you get a sort of like uh, you're inside your head, and then it's all, and also I'm scared to put it too loud because mm -hmm. you're just on your headphone, and I don't know. You know, it's uh, I, I prefer speakers as well. But for now, I'm you know, <laughs> you see where I am. It's not going to happen for now because I just moved. But uh, yeah, definitely when I get the chance, I will, uh, I will. If I find a house here and I like a permanent house, I'll definitely go invest as well. Maybe I'll get get these guys from uh, what was it? Um, kiss your ears, right? It's the, um, yeah, kiss your ears. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can really recommend those guys. They probably did, uh, I think, three other studios in the same complex. Yeah, here from. Um, Ben Rao, he's he's right next to me. He um he did it with wow. Kiss Your Ears, Emmanuel Zati as well. All right, cool. Yeah. And actually they're, they're good, you know, they they really try to to bring the price down as much as they can. They do everything like handmade. Yeah. Um they come to your studio, they do all the measurements and yeah, I mean maybe pro uh, probably if you are uh, like a bedroom producer and you you want to do it uh, by yourself it's more cheaper you can watch some tutorials yeah. build the best traps yourself i did this in the beginning as well and maybe you can ask a, a student who's like studying frequencies or i don't know audio engineering who can help you out or something yeah. you know well, like, this is this yeah. is what I did in the beginning. Yeah, I did the same. I bought like uh, I bought wood and make these panels and just filled it with some foam that I ordered on ixfoam.de. It was actually a, a German company. Yeah. And, and now I always show to my uh, my students like, hey, uh, you can get you can make them from towels. There's this guy online that does podcasts, and he said, yeah. There's more people than ever making uh, a podcast from home. And then he shows like that he sends some frequencies from uh, from a speaker uh, and it's pointed uh, and there's like some some uh, fabric in between and he tests all the fabric like an egg sponge, uh, all kinds of foam and then also towels and towels are the winners. And then he builds like all these absorbers from towels. So he just goes to the secondhand shop, buys shitloads of towels and yeah. uses these, which is pretty cool, I think. 
you know that's a cheap way if you don't have money you know and uh you, you can build it like this but uh yeah there's so many cool um uh, cool product because you get gik you get uh vicoustic there's so many and it gets cheaper so you know if you have a bit of money to invest i think it's it's really nice because your your room will sound amazing if you get somebody to uh to check it out in full you know and definitely uh, yeah. i mean if, if you if you want to invest i think that just that your room sounds properly is probably one of the most important things to to um to invest for because i mean if you if you love producing and to do it like i don't know every week for let's say 50 hours or something yeah and um you know you know you spend a lot of time here so it needs to be nice you need to feel well and the sound should be good yeah so so you have fun and i think also when you always constantly mix on headphones it's 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 exhausting for the ears i think yeah. it's i can't i can't uh, mix or produce on headphones for three or four hours non-stop it's yeah. almost impossible yeah me. it gets weird your ears get really warm i now bought these open yeah. ones which help because i had these closed biodynamics but mm -hmm. it's still i i really agree and also the whole experience of being in your room the sitting back and just listening to your track on a well yeah. in a well spaced room like we had in nordwijk uh, it's so nice it's so uh it's such you can hear all the reverbs and everything goes left and right you can actually hear your details yeah yeah, mm -hmm. very important, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. and good for if you need to record some podcasts or uh, or uh, tutorials as well. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, you also uh, you record everything there for uh, because you work for if you like you create uh, content for the the Marzo um, mm -hmm. uh, school, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and you record these tutorials there as well in in the same room or uh, is that a special? Uh, yeah, I do them. I do all the tutorials here as well. Yeah. Um, I, I always um I, I don't know whether you you heard of um the Marzo's channel and yeah. and all the others. I mean there is not only me who gives tutorials, it's like uh Aaron Volta, Nixu, Toman, Matri. So there's a bunch of artists who, who show their um their ideas or, or they do like um a uh, uh, track from scratch or um just how they how they start working or their templates or stuff like that. Yeah. And like, if, if you watch their tutorials, I mean, they also do them from home. I mean, if you have a cool idea how to use a plugin or something, you, you don't necessarily need to be in a studio. You can do it from home or yeah, yeah. I don't know, in, in, the, in the plane or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, I actually um, started this tutorial because I was uh, in, um, in Portugal in the first lockdown where um where i actually live yeah and um yeah i was like why not start learning again some some new techniques or um some different ways to be creative you know because very often you just get stuck in your in your ways of working yeah and then you're like yeah i, I want to have some fresh input you know yeah, yeah. so I, I became a member and then yeah demazo um saw that and um asked me man do do you want to give some videos as well like do you want to give some tips as well yeah and in the beginning i was like i don't know whether i can you know because it's it's not so easy to teach yeah you it's know? different you, yeah especially yeah. when you when you work and you you be creative to explain that at the yeah, same it's time it's very yeah. difficult yeah. you know yeah because you, your brain um yeah works on two different ways yeah yeah and, and how did you find it because uh, for me personally, because I, I think I started uh, a few years ago doing master classes in the beginning, I found it really scary with, with Ableton it was. And yeah. especially this like explaining what you're doing and still doing it. And then yeah. also realizing I actually never realized what I'm really doing. So you actually have to dive <laughs> in and say like, okay, this is actually what's happening, you know, to put it into words. Did, yes. did this change your your own uh, workflow as well? Did it like inspire you as well? Like, hey, now I've done this. Now you're explaining that you're actually getting more ideas because you've explained this thing. Because they say that when when you teach, you actually understand yourself better as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, totally, man. I mean, there's um, always when I um, when you say what you're doing, you you realize also um, different ways how you could do it. Yeah, yeah. you know, and then very often also when mistakes are happening they are kind of good mistakes you know yeah you know i really like it when i when i do something creatively and then 
um, um, the, the next minute something happened that I didn't want to do, but it's kind of cool. So mistakes are happening all the time and they kind of bring your creative uh, flow forwards for the next uh, idea yeah. or musical idea or groove or whatsoever yeah sometimes you just have heavy happy accidents right they, they call them yeah yeah uh <laughs> let's see john uh that is the uh the marzo emc it's like uh i think subscription based and you get all the all the all the big guys teaching you which is nice i've i've had uh aaron also in the show i think in october here and he had some i'm still using tantra that plugin you know uh it's, yeah that's sick wow yeah. it's insane you, you hear yeah. it a lot now in tracks though but it's nice it's like a super lfo 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 thing yeah th this is the perfect uh example for cool for um good mistakes happening yeah because yeah. it's just like this chain of like um filter delay uh, distortion and it goes to this wicked chain and then uh, you just go to these presets and all these weird things come out and you yeah. never know what's going to happen but yeah. somehow it sounds cool yeah i used <laughs> and to then, and then you use it do you know the sugar bite effect tricks also yeah, yeah it's yeah, very yeah. classic i it, it reminded me a bit of this but uh then it's, it's better these days but uh, yeah you know also for for people that do uh, for instance progressive house like progressive music they mm -hmm. always have these ta -ta -ta -ta, these stuttering kind of effects as well in there which is pretty cool it's really uh it h helps for more genres but it, it's nice these these type of tricks and therefore i think it's nice to do this so yeah people can get in yeah to get an insight in what what we're actually doing as as musicians and uh, and teachers so yeah mm -hmm. if you want to get a good insight people uh check out uh the demand so um, EMC, Sydney has his tutorials there, amongst many others. And Baba is online. I believe he's also a, a student there. He also became my student for a bit. So he's just like <laughs> hopping around, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is super cool. And uh, yeah, let's listen to some music. So uh, what do you think, Sydney? Shall we first play the one everybody already knows or shall we play something new? You say it. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Whatever you like, actually. I don't have any preference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Showing one or another. Okay, then I'm gonna go. Uh, I can't see which one it is. Uh, let me. Where are my scenes? Oh yeah. Then I'm gonna go for Basic Instincts because that's that's my new favorite. Cool. So this is gonna come out on East Enders, right? The end of May or. Um... And uh, the uh, vinyl release is uh, 30th of April, and um, digital. I think a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So, so then, like mid mid May or something. Mid May. Think, yeah. Then we have something to look forward to. All right. Here we go. Nice.
la la. I really like that one. Super nice. This is this is my favorite, I think, from the from the new uh, the new EP. Thanks, uh, man. But yeah, it's hard to pick a favorite because you're like uh, a machine. Well, you just told me before we started, like this is all lockdown uh, music mostly, uh, yeah. and it's now rolling out, right? <laughs> yeah, probably like like any other producer last year just made so much music man it's like crazy i think everyone's just waiting to get the tracks out yeah <laughs> yeah man this is one one of i think i made this one in uh december yeah yeah i was uh um, sending uh eastern dubs quite a lot of music and always like sending new ones and then i think step by step we built this ep together yeah um yeah i really like those tracks now that, yeah. that he chose a really good combination of house music and more minimal stuff and a bit more upfront as well. So yeah, yeah, because the third one, um, I think grinding is also a bit more this uh, minimal vibe, and then um, of uh, no, grinding, you know, grinding is very minimal as well. And the other one that's on there is also a bit with an organ on it, which is uh, which is nice. I don't have that one on it uh, on here. That's so. that's grinding. Grinding oh, is the grinding. more oh, yeah. uh, housey housey one with the organ sound oh yeah and that's the third one which had uh, which was a bit more minimal i um uh, i remember yeah exactly yeah. actually actually the third one um i i um sound uh, I, I signed it to locus but then uh, last minute i exchanged this track with another one because uh, there was one track that was a bit similar and then i talked to enzo and he was also maybe sent something a bit more um moody and deep and yeah. then i i sent this track high pressure to him um maybe some of the of the guys know it yeah. and then I, I was super happy because i had this track still free and i knew that uh chase um eastern dubs really liked that one yeah so i was uh was re really lucky that i i was able to to exchange those tracks yeah yeah nice yeah it's good yeah no, we need to be flexible you know there's uh it's nice <laughs> and, and it, if it suits the whole ep then it's uh, i think it's a nice uh nice uh change you know good to do Definitely. i sent him a message though i sent chase a message to uh to mm -hmm. invite him because i remember that one uh, i played in a, f a festival in poland like years ago i think plotslich am Boden. Mm -hmm. and he was playing there as well and i remember we we went for pizza and we chatted mm -hmm. about music for a long time so i hope he, he remembers and he wants to come on my show <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's see I, what he says. I think i think he would be really cool to in your show i mean he has so much music as well yeah yeah. Crazy. And his his studio it's is ridiculous. wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and he also told yeah. me then because then I think it's wow, it must be, yeah, it must be about six years ago. So I, then he was like also at the beginning or sort of of his uh, East End Dubs uh, journey. Well, not really the beginning because I think he was already going about for two years back then. Mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, he really found this new sound then, you know, and and now yeah, now it's been it's yeah, it, it grew as as it did. So it's nice to. Yeah to see how it flowed but his studio man he's really like also like a hardware freak how about you actually uh because you also um use hardware right or are you just in the box no no i, have, um, I think you can't see it maybe uh, i have to because i thought it. you had quite some stuff uh as far oh, as I I yeah. Oh, there you go <laughs> yeah oh wow yeah, I have some tr909 roland the digitact yeah um a lot of from these volcar um the Cork Volca, uh, how you call it? Volca keys, series. Or Volca or series. Beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I have some some students up there. You know the Sub Fatty. I have the Arp Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, Sub Boom Bass. The Cork Mini Log. Nice. And yeah. And the mixer is that the um, is that the Alan Heath. Alan yeah. Heath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Z fourteen. And they have a, like a MIDI uh, summer. Who, who collects all the MIDI yeah. from all the machines and then brings it all in here. So oh, wow. I can basically just press play in Ableton and everything can run at the same time. So it's like uh, synced. And audio wise, does it get like, uh, does all do all the inputs on the, the Z go into Ableton as separate channels? No, um, I, I run them through um, one channel. Yeah. So, but then I can split the audio in Ableton. Yeah, yeah. So you can record them one by one or so, or uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, because I used to have this uh, fo um, uh, no, this um, oh, I sold it. This uh, uh, what's this UK brand? Uh, uh, Soundcraft. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this this like tw 
22 channels uh, mixer and everything would come in, but I couldn't mm -hmm. use the EQ on the mixer. So I, I really wanted to use the EQ of the mixer before it went in my, my system. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the, the Z series as well mm -hmm. to, to like, oh, maybe I should get something like this. But yeah, now, now I'm just uh, yeah, on the road. I'm a digital nomad. So at the moment, <laughs> there's no mixer coming in. But yeah, nice to see, man, uh, this hardware. It's a cool workflow. Do you think that... Like working on these um, these devices uh, gives gives an extra like swing to your to your uh, to your the way you make music. Is it the interface? Is that important for you? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just a matter of fun for me personally, because everything that you do with these machines, you can do it in Ableton. Uh, it's it yeah. has all the opportunities that you have with hardware, um, but. Um, I think it's just like the haptics and to play with the knobs. I really like this feeling and yeah. it, it can boost your workflow. And sometimes, you know, if you use the mouse the whole time, I don't know, it's just, it gets a bit boring. And yeah. um, it feels like you're working at a bank, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. so, but, and, and if you have like hardware, I think it, it really spices up the whole experience of making music, you know? Yeah. Of course. You, um, I have the Ableton push as well, mm -hmm. and for all all, uh, all the synths or um, drums, mostly I, I use the push. It's probably my most used piece of gear. Yeah, and um, yeah, but I think um, there there are also of course some uh, sound advantages that you have with hardware that uh, can really boost up the sound. Yeah, I think if if you, for example, if I if I get out a really cool 909 groove from the uh, Roland Boutique, yeah. it sounds way way better if I do it with the in-house Ableton uh, 909 uh, drum. I don't know how's it called. Yeah, the drum rack. Yeah, I use drum it rack. Yeah, well. yeah, the yeah. drum core 909 core kit. Yeah, yeah. For example, it sounds super glassy, and I don't know. And if, if I use my um, Roland Boutique, it already sounds amazing when you record it. Yeah, yeah. And you have to do so, a lot of processing. So I use the 909 from Ableton, but you use a lot of processing in order to make it sort of sound a bit, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's really like, um, yeah, I don't know, a bit, uh, how does uh, Ari always says it? Like plucky, plucky. <laughs> it sounds plucky. Yeah. He said, oh, Look. you use that 909 from Ableton. Yeah, it's plucky. But it's, yeah. uh, you know, and if you, you, you need, you can process it and then, uh, then it gets better. But yeah, with the hardware, you know, uh, I, I have the, the um, Electron machine drum. And when I get mm -hmm. stuff through there, uh, you know, or I take the sounds from the Electron, then I really, it's already gritty. It already has sort of kind of like this sort of, yeah, yeah, character that you wanted to have, and that's way easier building a a groove with uh, with that than than in the box. I, I think as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th I think I, I read a, an article a couple of months ago about why Ableton always sounds or loses sound if you load a sample inside. It's uh, I think it has something to do with um, with the warping system they yeah. use. Yeah. You know, for example, if you if you load in a track into Ableton and bounce it and you do the same with Logic or Cubase, it always loses some quality yeah. in Ableton. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, if you warp and, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the warping the, system is, you know, that cuts the track in like thousands, thousands of different um, warps. Yeah. Then it kind of loses quality, you know? Yeah, yeah. I would never DJ also with, uh, with, with, I've seen people DJ with it. And I yeah. tried it myself. And also, I, of course, had it with my live set back in the day that I had all my loops and it would just yeah. sound a bit less, um, less defined than on, yeah. uh, on the track itself. But that's because if you have to warp it, then yeah, it's like using the master, uh, master tempo on the CDJs. That's the same thing. If you click it, you lose punch in your in your tracks. You really lose the punch, and that's yeah. So it's in key, but then you lose the punch. So it's like uh, a choice. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you're on the dance floor, you know, always go for the punch. Always, go always for go for the punch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As Muhammad Ali would say, the same, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we talk about boxing or making. Yeah, music? <laughs> yeah. I are you in the box or out the box? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, okay, get them projects open already, says Chris Swift. Shall we do it? Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Stop talking. <laughs> yeah, always... uh, people want to want to see Malindi, the best and most pedal P. 
Yeah. Oh, this is so old as tuna. Yeah, <laughs> you probably don't, don't have it. I don't have it. It's the same. The same with Johannes. He, he was like, yeah, I don't have. Uh, you know, even tracks that he made like two months ago. He says, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's working anymore. <laughs> it's not working anymore. <laughs> so people were asking. Uh, yeah, if you shift the samples or do updates, you know, you always lose yeah. some part of the projects. I'm always also like, if I have the pre masters ready, I don't care about that project anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I. I. I, have it, I know it. I also put it like together with all the recording okay this is done but mm. for the tracks that i didn't finish and that i that i kept sometimes i go like oh that was actually quite a good track i find one on my hard drive I say, oh let's let me open it and i'll <laughs> work on it and i'm like oh no, fuck like eight plugins not found and samples <laughs> missing okay never mind i'll make something new you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay let's see what we have uh do we have any questions or something for djing complex mode is the best I thought, yeah, beats. I don't know, yeah, complex, which is good. The, the so, complex pro. Yeah, but that that changes your. Then you lose the punch on beats. It's so and so, but then you get a bit of modulation. So on the the tones. Yeah, so. on complex pro, I think it's better for like vocals and stuff, which is like more fluent and long. If you have like yeah, like really like short cutted sounds, I think the beats, beats is better. Yeah. Yeah, it's always yeah. better, but otherwise you lose punch as well. Like you lose yeah. attack or transient if it's on complex and it's a drum sound. But yeah. yeah, for full tracks, I just don't know. I would, I would never. Yeah, I've never. Yeah, I've only had live sets in, uh, in, and then you just have loops. So and and so melodic stuff and and loops, not full tracks. So yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. But you know, I guess in the end, you don't really don't really hear it if you're not like us we are like uh super nerds you know <laughs> but yeah if people that are not into music and just come to dance i don't think they'll go like oh hey i think uh sydney's playing with this uh with this warp mode on beats <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in berlin they do that yeah berlin yeah exactly yeah. they're like they, are, hey. they always <laughs> listen very analytic to what you do yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly. enjoyment <laughs> They're like, oh, I think he's using he's using complex pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's get into a track. So, um, yeah, oh. you, you want to play? Uh, you want to do Organica? Maybe I can play the track in between, and then um... I can also show the basic instinct that you just uh, oh, yeah. played. Yeah, to show this one first. Yeah, let's do that one first, and okay. then, then we'll get into Organica. Maybe. Hey, you no know cues online, my friend. Okay. <laughs> so, Bildschirm, Bildschirm freigeben. No. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Let me also so, move you a bit. I uh, can make it smaller, so that should be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is looking nice. Uh, people, if there's anything with the sound or uh, with the view, let us know. Um, let me... Um, yeah. So, basic instinct. I think I bounced this one in December somehow, so it's not too far away. Yeah, so how, how did it go with your uh, lockdown uh, process? Because um, uh, you got you got back and you did the EMC <laughs> of the Marzo and, uh, and then you got super productive again. Um, in, in what way did you think it changed your, um, uh, yeah, your workflow or your, your process of making music? Well, I think mainly what I enjoyed the most is that if you don't have any gigs on the weekend or if you don't have any tours um, coming, you you just make music without thinking about this the whole time, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because uh, normally you always have a bit of pressure thinking about the weekend, thinking about the next tour, and you you are, you are with the head in the future always, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So and d during during the lockdowns, I always just made music and was not thinking about anything and trying new things out, you know, new machines, new ways of making music. So I think this really was a really fortunate situation when you think about um, creating or or creative process because there was so much time in that you could invest and in, in um, growing creatively. Yeah. instead of just like delivering you know yeah because normally you have always a bit pressure you have to make like i don't know four eps a year maybe and um you have certain labels that maybe ask you or you have certain aims where you want to get your music out yeah 
but um, I think it's better when you just like make music freely without a certain aim and you know just yeah. like doing it for the purpose of doing it yeah exactly yeah because then you're like oh the whole world is like on uh, on hold let me yeah. uh, let me just sit here and make some music and oh, i don't have to go anywhere this weekend must also have been liberating <laughs> yeah yes you know? exactly yeah and uh <laughs> don uh, chatelaine's online he said uh, legend look, hair is looking sharp as always any shampoo tips <laughs> <laughs> I, I always use the shampoo of my girlfriend ah that's the yeah. secret get a good girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> like get a good girlfriend to get good shampoo yeah exactly a good conditioner i remember <laughs> i also had uh back when my hair was long my my girlfriend also she actually gave me conditioner here man put this in. <laughs> it will be less like rope i'm actually growing it man soon it will be just as long as yours <laughs> <laughs> But 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 less, well, less you need a lot. Of, you need really good shampoo to achieve that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe you can send the bottle from your, <laughs> from your girlfriend. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's see this project. I'm really curious, man. Yeah, um, that's it. I mean, it's I don't know how many layers Lots do I have. Recordings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite a lot. So this is the synth uh, 60, section. Forty-two tracks. Forty-three. With yeah. The groups. yeah this is so i mean it's a very minimal kind of track from from what's going on it's just like a, a groove with a bit of um kind of a um step sequencer movements going on and this kind of creates the vibe of yeah. the track yeah and uh, i think here this is this operator um channel that i froze yeah so um where i just basically let i just let it play probably it's really quiet isn't it yeah it's, it sounds good i don't know how it is for for you guys uh let us know it sounds pretty good i just just load the limiter on there to get it bit out yeah so there's nothing on your master normally no there's nothing on the only, master now only you do the bit uh, you get a bit of low end out of the sides yeah yeah So um, I always start with um, like creating some um, like more weird kind of ideas that I maybe use later on. Um, and this kind of always is for me pretty cool to start a creative idea. It's just with a sequencer, yeah. you know, where just some random rhythmic um, um, movements come out and then you... You always have something to work with instead of just like okay now i make a, a musical idea and play in some chords you yeah. know yeah. i always like to start with something a bit more rhythmic to to get going because um i think if you have um, a good groove going on it's much easier to 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 keep on working instead of just like a, a musical idea yeah to have something swingy like some swingy weird percussion going on is always nice to have and then then place your 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 kicks and your hi-hats and your claps I think that's mm -hmm. a really nice way of working. And what sequencer is this? This is like a probably. Um, so here I, I just used a, a bass note, yeah. basically. But um, this is, um, let me just play the different bass line um, layers. So I have this main bass line, which I did with operator. Yeah. Let me take away this. Just play it together with the kick. And then I kind of copy pasted it with um, with this uh, sample sound from a bass. Yeah. Oh, it's stopping at the moment. I don't know why. Uh oh. <laughs> oh shit! We have some technical problems. Yeah, it's hanging right. Oh no. Okay. Oh, there you go. It works. So. So this kind of gives gives a texture to the bass line, the second layer. Yeah. I just play this one only. Yeah, also goes a bit to the delay and to the room reverb, right? Yes, there's a bit delay on it, a bit of erosion and some cueing. So the delay comes from here, from uh, the bus yeah. um, channel. It's like more like a mid-layer kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. So alone, it sounds quite boring, a bit too yeah. subby, and this gives like the texture. And then, I'm 
this sequencer um, line that I added, yeah, that like I made with um, this probabilistic sequencer from Alex, Alex Kidd. Kidd. Yeah. Really cool plugin, actually. Ah, cool. Yeah, it's like a Max for Life, I think. Uh, is, it, is it free or is it? Or did he? Uh, it's not free. I think yeah. it's a bundle. And this whole bundle is like 15 euros or something. That's um, no money. Yeah, here, sequencer yeah. bundle. How cool. Is it called? Cool. It's uh, Max for Life. And you have this like heads for days, cute little sequencer and a probabilistic one. So How cool. Yeah, because I did have something of him. I think he's he did one for a pack like years ago for, for yeah. Ableton. And uh, I didn't know he made so much stuff. It's interesting. Looks like the colors of the 808. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really like it. It's like you just put in this um, random button and then it just gives you. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a starting point. I think these sequencers are great for having a starting point. Yeah. Yeah. So this is when it's on. It's like running through these different uh, sequences. Like yeah. here it goes back and forth and here it just goes forward. Yeah, they call it drunk, right? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. you have yeah. the pitches, you know, the, the trigger, when in the time frame is triggered. And here, um, yeah, like the notes, the octaves. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then you can put in some swing, lengths of the notes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is what I did basically here, but with the operator. And um, yeah, and then it, it came out this kind of... And no mind having a chat with himself. He says, what's the bundle again? Sorry, I will look it up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's up here. You can see it's a sequencer, sequencer bundle. bundle two by Alex Kidd. <laughs> by Alex Kidd. Yeah, nice. And uh, I saw Yoko. Hey, Yoko. He says, no raw, raw loops used lately. <laughs> I go. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's cool to have these layers at the, in the baseline. I really love the baseline from this, uh, from this track. Yes, I think... Um, these layers make it interesting, you yeah. know, if, if you don't have these like a bit more mid-range frequency uh, movements going on, it's just like a sub bass line and it's, it kind of uh, gets a bit lost in the, in the mix, you know? So. Yeah, it's, it's hard to keep it also interesting over the course of time if, if it's not moving so much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So all together, it's, uh, it's yeah, powerful. kind of the, the bass line is, is really strong. It gives a lot of character to the track, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, so I spend spend a lot of time there. And did it go from from a template because it says basic template? Did you start it from a basic template uh, that you a new one that you built like uh, as a starting point? Ah uh, no, th this is um, my basic template that I built. So I have this this template where I where I always start with working with. Yeah. It it's um, it's this one, but back then it's called basic template but then i forgot to save it oh, yeah. and then yeah. it was overwritten with the project so now i called it start template zero <laughs> yeah 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 i have yeah. i have similar then you work in your template and then you go oh you're suddenly you're building a track and then you're saving it as you go and like ah ah this was my template <laughs> exactly uh, the past as well but now they have like you can have more templates right uh uh, set up at they even have the templates on the left side i think now it's it's fine to have a, yeah. a bunch more yeah oh ah, yeah here yeah so there you can set up a bunch that you can yeah. use so that's exactly uh, yeah you can you can load up your, a lot of different ones and then save them here it's quite yeah. cool yeah okay i see somebody says audio is clipping slightly or is it just me i'm not sure um I have to pull out okay maybe pull down bit, yeah that's a cool waves uh, limiter. I've never seen that one before. Waves it's always the... has new stuff, don't they? Yeah. L1. L1. Oh, but this is like the new L1 then or so. It made it, it, made it look all fancy. Yeah, it looks a bit different. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I always, uh, when I have this notice of updates, I do it immediately. So maybe it's just an updated uh, yeah. version. Updated version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. did really. They did have a sale on, I believe now. For instead of four thousand, you pay three hundred, which is a great deal. <laughs> it looks to me. Crazy. Yeah, for <laughs> like the full bundle. Yeah. Um, uh, what is your E send? My what? Your E, your send E. Is that parallel compression? Um. Ah, yeah, that's parallel compression. But it's um the Euromix. It's a hyper compressor. 
I don't know whether you heard of it. It's um, no, that's new you can see. you can download it for free. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's um, from you know Per Hammer. It's a guy from Sweden, I think. Yeah, he makes amazing tracks. Exactly. Yeah, he makes really good stuff, and it's basically just a chain of compressors, a utility device, and a limiter, and you have all these parameters where you can automate. Um, the, this chain of compressors yeah. really depends on what kind of music do you, you want to do. You know, if you do like um, techno or house or minimal, you know, you, you want to keep it a bit more um, uh, de um, uh, delicate or I don't know how to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a bit more refined. <laughs> so it's just, it's just this chain of compressors cool. where you just uh, run, um, yeah, you, you run the signal through it. And then it creates like a different. This is now only the, the bass line playing. And I have the kick in, the bass line as well, but very, very, um, very soft. Very, very, um, the volume is very low. Yeah. It's mainly for, for the percussive section. And it really boosts up um, the sound spectrum. Yeah. The, if, you, if you do it, I always do it in the end, you know. If I if I feel that the, the highs needs a bit more presence, then I use this Euromix uh, hyper compressor. Yeah, cool. Well, I guess uh, they can just find it on uh, on uh, on Google. Uh, I'm also gonna check it out after the show. The hyper 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 compressor. I'll just definitely check I, it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I actually yeah. also do it at the last. My parallel compression chains always come in last. If I feel like the track needs some, I do some parallel distortion. Or some mm -hmm. parallel, uh, some parallel compression as well, like on a on a scent, and just send some sounds to make it, just give it a bit more beef, so to speak. You know, if it's missing something, I, uh, exactly. I like to it, like to do. It that definitely too. gets your track more close to to getting being played in the club. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know. It, uh, and also, people say, yeah, but you're just adding volume. I said, yeah, yeah, I am, but still, I feel because it's parallel, you know, yeah. and you can add it to sort of in, and you if you turn it off, you you miss it. But if you turn mm -hmm. it on, you don't really hear it get there. So you do hear like a little bit of more push from the track. It's it's interesting how that works. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, you can be really creative with that. You can also like, yeah. I don't know, yeah. add like um, um, a stereo width device, for example. Yeah. Like, for example, then if, if you want to boost the highs, but you want to be, you want this parallel highs, watch more, much more scent in the stereo field. Yeah. Uh, something else you can also do with this um, power compression. What I um, sometimes like to do if I do something a bit more modern and um, yeah, a bit more techy, I think this is something you, you can do. If you go more old school, I always uh, have the impression that the drums need to be more central yeah. And, yeah. and more mono in a way. And yeah. But it's a, it's still a matter of taste, you know. Yeah. Everyone has different kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, and I'm glad you say that actually, because I sometimes struggle with mixes that's like, okay, I made it wide. I put, I had like a, a mono clap, and then made it, the clap a bit wider. And I was like, yeah, now it doesn't sound like the way I want. Now it sounds too mm -hmm. modern, sort of like yeah. you know, because the classic house stuff is mostly centered, you know. Um, exactly. Yes, uh, you know, it, if it's mono, it gets more punch and more power in the middle, but it just sounds less polished, you know. But if it sounds too polished, it's not that classic sound again. So it's definitely what you what you're going for, I guess, you know, in 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 the result. Yeah, exactly. So if you have your drums in mono, and then, for example, you can bring the the parallel compression a bit more stereo. It's uh, you can kind of um, level up the the amount of stereo width that you want to add. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it doesn't sound too stereo or too like uh, high freshen up. So a bit more like uh, tight and in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So just add mono parallel compression, basically. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, somebody found it. You can find it on Euromix underscore net, and they have a YouTube channel where they have some tutorials. Oh, nice. Per yeah, Hama. exactly. Ah, nice. They, have, they have a tutorial how to use it as well. And I mean, you can you can go super creative with that, and even like create your own background textures. You know, yeah. it's um yeah, it's really really cool. Man, I I'm, it made me, I, when we're done with the show, I'm gonna check out my Per Harmer track. I bought one track of him. I think it's two years ago. It was ridiculous. I remember like this hi hat. Mm -hmm. it, it it was like this nice like top end. 
And mm. I think it was an acid track with some acid bassline in there. I have to <laughs> check it out. You know, <laughs> sometimes you get yeah. that. You, oh wait, he had this track that I really, really liked. So we're gonna check that out. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, do we have any more? Um, oh yeah, we even have a question also. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello, <laughs> has a question. Do you always use the same groove on the groove pool? Uh, and do you use almost uh, and do you use it almost everything in the track? I think mean on every track. Um, yeah, and I really love the MPC Swing 63. Yeah, I uh, use the 60, 67 from uh, the the MPC a lot. Yeah, funny. Yeah, 67 is quite it's quite heavy. It's quite heavy, heavy yeah. Strong. yeah. Yeah, I mean um, the 63 is for, for my uh, taste of swing and perfect. But well, it really depends on how it sounds, you know, because sometimes I have, um, I don't know, an, a synth section, I have an ARP playing and if uh, it sounds better, if it's not, it doesn't have that much swing than yeah. the rest of the track. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to the groove, I always use the same swing because I, I have the impression that otherwise it sounds a bit off. Yeah. Or it sounds not tight, you know? Yeah, and you're fighting, then you're just really like, oh, okay, I can't get it right. And it's just using the same swing on all of them, basically. That's uh, that's the key, I guess, you know, to have the same the same groove going on. Even though I do a lot of manual swinging, uh, which yeah. sounds weird. Yeah, exactly. Right. I just want to say, like, normally I just take a note and just move it slightly to the right with yeah. um, with the command button, hold. Yeah. And then you can, you can choose your own swing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then normally what Ableton does, it, it keeps this this little space that you moved, it it recognizes it with the other notes as well, you know. And sometimes I think this sounds a bit more organic, a bit more cool, but um, I kind of fell in love with this MPC 63. 1663. <laughs> <I have it laughs> and I, and I, I stayed with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I use the 67 and I've got the timing, not on 100%, but like on, on 50 or so. So I guess we're, okay. we're, we're, we're leaning towards the same swing there. <laughs> but I think more of them, somebody said, yeah, all these swings are quite the same. Like also the Ableton swing, you have the Logic swing, you have the MPC swing. So basically it's all swing, but you got to find your own, uh, yeah, fine point actually you know it's uh, i actually yeah. also found out by teaching uh that the that the, the the grooves have a lot of other uh grooves you know like if you have a bunch of bongos you can add a bongo or like a, some some kind of like uh um special groove from that groove pool and you put it on the bongo and it will also copy the velocity so suddenly it sounds like a real uh yeah percussion groove like a bongo you know and it's really cool really? How, how they yeah. yeah they have so much more like uh i don't know uh yeah what do you call this not bachata but all these different types of uh genres so it's really cool to to check out this this full groove pool and just slam it on some drums uh every, yeah that's every that's really cool feature yeah. i think you can you can even do it the other way around that if you have like a, a nice old school track and you like to groove you can kind oh, yeah. of extract the groove from this track yeah. and use exactly this swing that it's used in this track yeah yeah that's that's super nice if i haven't done that too much i should do that like i should try that one time because yeah it's sometimes you start you find a super nice groove you know in your yeah. in your old school 90s sample pack or whatever you know we, if you make so for a long time music you have amazing amount of sample packs and you find this really nice groove and it's nice to yeah. extract the groove from it it's a good good point i'm writing that down you know it's a nice <laughs> inspiration um yeah uh, we also have questions let's see uh joko <laughs> does Sydney <laughs> have any side projects or or does stuff aside from house yeah how about that do you have a colter alias <laughs> <laughs> no i don't have uh, the colter alias like joko which is super dope i um i try stuff like but i, I never released anything of it i did a lot of hip-hop and um, a lot of breakbeat stuff as well but I don't know. I think I, I, I kind of try to save these projects for um, for my album, which I hope I can bring out next year. Yeah. So I'm, I'm already collecting ideas. And um, yeah, I don't I don't have an alias, actually. 
No. No. Maybe I should think about it. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Filions or uh, or CH or A. You have a lot of different ones you can choose. Of. <laughs> you, know, you got a lot of names. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm looking forward to hearing that, man, because it's always nice. I know Josh also has a uh, has his uh, his alias. So he has more now because he also did something yeah. new with Bontan, but he also has like one for uh, for. Um, uh, more ambient stuff, uh, which is cool. So yeah, looking mm -hmm. forward to hear some other sounds. Good question, Johannes. <laughs> yeah, actually, there was one track um, I had an alias when I did uh, some um, collaborations with Santé back in the days. Yeah, I think like five years ago we made a bit more so um, techno-ish influenced stuff. Yeah, and I think we 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 did uh, something under the name AVTR. Like his label was oh, called. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Avo uh, Avoto. Avoto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, yeah. was like five years ago. Yeah. And um, I think this was the only time where I really uh, did something under another name than Sydney Charles. Oh wow! So there is an alias. See, <laughs> <laughs> a, a hidden and, one. A hidden one. A hidden one. Yeah. You you forgot it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also done like loads of different stuff. I actually have like four or something over the years. But also in the beginning, I didn't know really what name to use, and then I changed my sound, and you know that's. But that's like uh, I think uh, 14 years ago or something. So there's many different communes floating around. So it's, it's, yeah. I think I think it's really hard to start uh, fresh with a new name. You know, it's like start from the beginning with yeah. the. Yeah, I've been Sorry. doubting it a lot, but I've been I, I, at some point, like a few years ago, I went totally dub techno, and then some some bookers in Holland were like, "Yeah, if you're dub techno, <laughs> you're mm -hmm. a house." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm really into dub techno now." So it's it's weird if somebody makes a switch, <laughs> or maybe that wasn't too smart. But you know, it's also <laughs> nice to just release music and make music. You know, it doesn't have to be really complicated. But yeah, I think it's also good and it's fun. Like like yeah, like how Joko does it with his Coulter and this uh, Joko stuff. If you have a clear uh, separation you know maybe that's also smart to do um yeah, yeah i mean if if you keep still keep the uh, the joker stuff going strong i think you you have like freedom to do this yeah but i i also wouldn't mind if you would have brought out the culture stuff under the joko name you know yeah, yeah i, I don't, also don't think it's really that uh, it's still this you can still hear it's him but then it's it's more breakbeat oriented but yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's his choice of course <laughs> but still, i mean okay. i mean you can bring out break breakbeats under the same name and it's still like this kind of like a bit hip-hop influenced style but you can still hear it's him you yeah. know yeah so yeah it's nice i always see him on instagram when when he has a when he has a free day you can see oh, okay there's a, he's busy you know it's really nice to see <laughs> uh, okay so let's go to a question um mm -hmm. we have uh, mike van kran uh, our friend from belgium asking kick process do mm -hmm. you take your kicks from your hardware or do you have like special samples that you've been using over the years uh um, are you getting the sample packs from Piff and using those kicks? What, um, how do you do it? All kinds. Um, mostly, I really take samples. Like in this track, it's um, I don't know which sample pack it is, but um, SN, I think I forgot which one it is. But uh, it really depends, you know. Like, especially when it comes to, to 909 kicks, I always prefer to take the one I recorded from the um, Roland Boutique. Yeah. Um, but I, I always start with different kick drums, but I'm a really big fan of layering my kick, kick drums as well, like I did with the bass line. Oh, cool. I always, um, I did it here as well. So I always split up the frequencies. Like here you have like the mid. Yeah. Man, I, I never seem to get this right. Yeah. Yeah, you have the mid frequencies, and then I just copy paste the same kick. Okay. And here you, here you have just like the low end. Ah, and then you just use the volume or so to to determine like how you want to have it, and you can process them together or so. Exactly. And then you can also choose, um, for example, you just only want to have this information here, you know, like the the clicky part. And not the the sustain. Not the tail. Yeah, yeah. And then and then here you can you can just uh, do the sustain as you want it. You know. Yeah. Without without losing anything because you have all the other information here in yeah. the in the mid range. Yeah, interesting. So, it's a nice way of working, man. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's I do this a lot. Yeah. Actually. 
because this way you can actually sort of like create it's like uh working with kick too you know this uh this plugin that people use for kicks as well and uh, mm -hmm. and yeah there you can also like draw the line okay this kick needs uh needs to uh, have this sort of like decay the other one needs to uh, and this is like similar similar thing but then um really practical i guess yeah exactly yeah and then i, I always make this group you know so i, I group the bass lines and then add uh, the, the kick drums and then i process them all together so i have a transient master to just add a little bit of attack yeah to yeah. it yeah it's from native instruments i think quite uh known yeah yeah I also um, yeah i use the drum bus actually for this uh i just put one drum bus and then use mm -hmm. the use a transient from there to add a bit of punch to it i really like this that little bit of the transients nice yeah and the exactly. ssl you use the ssl as well on the mm -hmm. funny i use that on the high end mostly yeah i i love to use it on the low end yeah actually. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> i love i love the low cut because when i use the low cut from the ssl it's sounds so much more on point and loses all the muddiness yeah so i really like the ssl um yeah oh interesting from, so, you, from waves. so you cut like everything under 30 or 40 or so 30 is it something like here yeah, 39 39 yeah yeah but it depends on the kick as well sometimes yeah. i just do it on the 30 but here i think because the baseline is super thick and present i i just uh i i cut out a bit more yeah yeah yeah, I was, I was, um, I, I spoke to this. I think was it uh, with the Nora Q. He does the, the mixing masterclass in my, uh, in my advanced group, and we mm -hmm. were discussing this. And I said, well, once I made a track um, uh, where I cut like everything under fifty hertz, and then mm -hmm. I just boosted like fifty hertz a lot. It was an A, I believe an A or a G, the the track. And, yeah. Um, and um, I boosted like the low end a lot with like a Poltec EQ, but then cut everything with a very steep cut under 50 because I, mm -hmm. I analyzed this yours foreign track, you know, back in the day when he did like Chase the Mouse and stuff, like more the tech housey days. And uh, yeah, yeah. that low end sounded super nice. Like a friend of mine called me in from the car, like, whoa, dude, what did you do to the low end? And I noticed that if you're really making dance floor stuff that you can best you can pretty much cut like a lot of low end off you know and then Yaron said yeah but more for the organic or melodic house they usually use like uh, recorded instruments and you want to keep that low end in there a bit yes so, yeah for but for our music i don't think that's necessary you know to yeah really the i agree i mean i um i also think that the um, with eqing you also always want to think about eqing different groups together because this always gives you the impression of these are kind of working together as well, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, um, for example, if you do the drums, you can do something, you take the whole, um, the whole group and then you EQ them together as well. And then it kind of gets it the impression that it all sounds like one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah especially with like low cuts, um, as you said, when it comes to, um, kick drums and bass lines and um you really have to you really have to know where uh, which um information you want to get let through or not yeah. you know yeah and especially when you balance the kick drum and the bass line i i always spend so much time to to to, to get it right because simply it is um the uh, frequencies that in the club will hit you the most yeah so it, it needs to be done right, you know? Yeah, because if I, I would remember from my live set in the past, I once did a track uh, where I, um, I actually took a kick from Jimster <laughs> and I put <laughs> it in one of my tracks. It was like an F, uh, an F. So it was like around 40 hertz. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so, uh, so uh, like low that it didn't came out in the club that well because it was mm -hmm. really heavy. And uh, I probably didn't cut the low end. This is like like ten years ago or so, twelve years ago. So it was really low. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I think that that cutting the low end is like essential because if that information doesn't come through, then yeah. uh, then it has more uh, power to really you know play those sixty hertz and those one hundred hertz punches, and you get way yeah, tighter low end uh, in the club. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, cool. No, that's on kicks. I hope you're happy with this, uh, Mike. This was quite the answer for kicks, <laughs> right? I think I've never had so much uh, answer for a kick. And oh, yeah, also, uh, the CLA is really nice to add some uh, distortion or drive because um, I see you also have the driver and the CLA on the kick. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the driver is there always when I want to get the kick, uh, yeah, more distorted. 
there's always a, a big difference when you add this plugin. You always have to be careful. It can really... It's crazy. <laughs> this... I, I have it as well in the complete package and it's really weird. You can also use it very creatively. Yeah. Yeah, boom. Gets a click out yeah. much more. Yeah. yeah. I, I, for some reason, I never find the right setting on the, on this guy. For it's always I always get to whoa, it's freaky because it also has yeah. LFOs and stuff. Yeah, here I actually didn't do anything. You know, it's just like all on zero, but oh. it already only the distortion is up a bit. Yeah. But yeah. That, but that's it. Like the resonance is totally down. The frequency is on on super high, so yeah. it doesn't really affect the the part where the kick is moving the most yeah, you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so so it, it just like kind of yeah, adds because, um yeah. a bit of um slightly bit of distortion and loudness to the kick yeah yeah it's amazing yeah this is it so kind of sound. also like glues these two together like yeah. the the mid and the low one yeah 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 i just use a drum bus maybe i should also go a bit more uh, fancy on my uh, yeah. my plugins you know well sometimes it's it does too much you know you can <laughs> yeah, that, that, it's also fun yeah. it's also no. fun you know that's how i always end up with this thing yeah like, you can well, like do really <laughs> crazy shit with it yeah. <laughs> nice yeah cool so and the, the cla from waves yeah classic stays really good okay I've yeah, yeah so many comments always uh so yeah. good Sorry, guys, if, if I miss your question, I will uh, I have to just like, <laughs> I can't keep up. I'm so into this whole thing here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, this classic uh, compressor. Do you also have UAD, actually? I think so, eh? because I saw UAD when I when we just uh, started out mm -hmm. doing your sound card. I have so. some um, UAD plugins as well. When you buy this, um, the, um, how you call it? the audio interface yeah. then you can download most of them but um most of them are not um registered only the one that i um yeah. oh, that you've uh, yeah yeah that you put in your blue folder yeah because otherwise yeah. it's horrible because then you have the whole list and <laughs> you can't delete yeah. the list yeah but, oh, but okay. also what is really annoying with these plugins when you are on the road and the um your um universal audio interface is not plugged in then yeah. you can't use these yeah. uh, plugins. Yeah, yeah. It's really annoying. You can only use it when you use the audio interface. So when you're on the road, it's basically useless. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly then for mixing, even though they do have some creative plugins. I, I see you have yeah. the Unpack tape. I I have that one as well, but I gave my uh, UAD card to Jaron when I left um, Holland. So I, I'm, <laughs> I miss it, but I, I want to get a, a new UAD. But it's it's so nice, and if mm -hmm. I have to if I have to ask you, um, Sydney, mm -hmm. it's like I'm now going to ask you a question: waves or UAD? <laughs> what what would you prefer? Is there a preference, or do you say no? no for me, it doesn't matter. I have to say I'm not geek enough to um, to know a, the proper difference between those two. Yeah. But I I've I've started working with waves um, before I used UAD. And um, I'm so stuck with those plugins. I know them so well, how they sound and what they do. So um, I, I stick to, to Waves yeah, most, yeah. most of the time. Yeah, yeah Waves has a lot as well. And, you know, also these brightener uh, or this one knob. I really like these one knobs. It's just the driver, the brightener. These are really cool to, to use as well, the reverb. Yes. Yeah, I think, I think they both have something. But sound-wise, I once did a test at SAE. Uh, I made the chain with uh, with, uh, with Ableton plugins. I made a master mm -hmm. chain with um, uh, with Waves and with uh, with UAD, and then used one button on the keyboard to like turn off and on the chains. Yeah, and I found like UAD the most silky one. But of course, mm -hmm. there it's not like a waterproof like. Uh, um uh a proof test you know it could be that i've set the settings different but i still think that the uad sounds super silky and um you know waves is, is of course super nice but i'm not sure you know the, the uad must they must have spent so much time in making them this expensive that i actually hope they're just better also <laughs> yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um yeah let's see if we have another track the top loop group what um uh, can we listen to that in solo? Stork music, ask. Yeah, Any sure. Stork music.
It's also very noisy. It's like you have some sort of like, or uh, how do they call it? F uh, uh, Foley a loop in there. So like. Foley? Foley, yeah. It sounds like it's sort of. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's this one. This kind of dirty. Yeah, it's like one. one? Like, yeah, I think it's one that's like. It has some kind of. Uh, uh, this one. This, yeah, this is probably the main loop kind of hits in the background. Yeah. Probably this one. Yeah. A lot of sidechain also on it. Eh? On the, do, we this, do we do this on the whole group? or? Um... There's no sidechain on it, actually. I just um, did it by hand because I didn't like the clap. Ah, like this. So I just cut out the, the clap. I just wanted to have this. Yeah. Yeah, just information. Yeah, I usually do that as well. With when I use yeah. loops, you can't have like six claps in a loop of in a track. Yeah. So you, yeah, nice. It sounds like a side chain. Nice. Yes. Yeah, it sounds like it. But I think together with the with the clap, it it sounds it sounds way better if you have the whole. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, such, I really like your grooves, man. It's always like very bouncy and, and you know, it really likes uh, like the classic kind of feel for it. Uh, um, let's, shall we also go to Organica a bit? I'm also really curious to Organica. Sure, man. Uh, uh, actually, I have a question also. Are you in okay. Artractive? Artractive? Is that, uh, that's a great concept where lots of musicians make music. Adonis mm -hmm. Jones is asking if you're in that... Uh, Art attractive. Uh, no, I've never heard of that. Uh, to be honest, well, yeah. I don't know. Are you in a funk is. house? Then a funk house you also have there. There's a bunch of different buildings uh, where everybody's. Uh, I think Florian Meindl also. Um, ah, do you, you mean where where my studio is located? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, no, no. My my studio is like in in Friedrichshain. It's a bit more. Um, it's like the total east part of Berlin. Yeah. But I've been um, at Riverside studios where you uh, have like martin ira panpot um uh who else is there booker shades oh yeah yeah um florian meindl yeah some like a lot of german techno guys um used to be there but it was too expensive i think i, I paid more money for the security than for the rent itself <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was I was feeling a bit weird. It was, I think, one of the buildings in Berlin where you have the most break-ins or something. Yeah. And I, yeah. I was never like at night. I could never really sleep with all my my stuff in that room, knowing that everyone wants to get in there and break in and stuff. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now I have my studio in the in the second floor, like with five doors to get in oh, before yeah. you kind of reach the studio. So I can safe. sleep better now, yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, cool. Yeah, actually, I did a release once at Florian Mindels at his uh, Flash recordings, Flash, mm -hmm. Flash records. Yeah, that's years ago. I should ask him also for the show. Wrote down his name. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> hey, Sonny is online. He says, yo, Sydney, Camille. <laughs> hey, Sonny, welcome. Cool. So this is it. Uh, oh, this is um, this is still. Uh, I was like, <laughs> is this Organica? I thought it was. Okay, let's bring out Organica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm really curious to to this one. Uh, here we I, go. I love the swing on that track. I actually broke it down a bit. Like, okay, this this swing. So I loaded in Ableton to see where the swing was located on the, uh, especially this little this little drum, uh, and it's like this really nice sounding uh, snare drum. Or like a, it's a really and really cool. You layer the heads. There's like mm -hmm. some different heads going on, different velocities, and it's it's really nice how it's constructed. So I'm curious to how it how it looks. Um, that's a, oh nice colors. Do you, you don't use the same colors uh, every track, right? Yeah. No, it's always different. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> always. I, I'm very very. Uh, <laughs> uh, you call it OCD with these things. Yes. <laughs> hey, even my oh. nephew is watching. Joris, hey, how oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me check. It's loud enough. Maybe I have to bring it up a bit again. Yeah, this is just so, such a cool, like, this brings me back to the 90s, man. Right? 
So yeah, and you want to check the 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 heads, right? The the swing. Yeah, the swing and the heads, like how uh, it's nice. A, a lot of layers again. You're a, yeah. You're a layer guy. Layer guy, yeah. yeah. Here as well, I did the same thing with the bass line. Then. Yeah. So actually, the organ sound. It's just like this. But uh, yeah, it was a really big pain in the ass because I used this plugin from Arturia and it's like an original organ sound. Yeah. Looks like that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, this is B3. I think uh, Native also has a version of this, right? It was this B3, was it Native? Yeah, but it's such a big pain to mix, you know? Yeah. Because it's really, so um, well, you have these like FX that you can add, you know? Yeah. Um, but in the end, I had to mix it such a long time to make it sound right. Like a lot of EQing and all that stuff, especially with the main lead. Yeah. The main, the main lead, like this one here. Yeah, it's, it sounded just like not right, you know, yeah. all the time. And when I send it to, to Chris and Punk, they always said, man, it, it sounds weird there. And can you try a bit more uh, EQing there? And I was like, man, I already spent like two hours mixing this organ. And <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't get done me anywhere. It. And Tommy, you're probably really done with this track by now. <laughs> yeah. That's just one of those, you know, because it gets a really strong hook. Yeah, yeah, and then you've been listening to this hook, and then people say, "Oh, can we see organic guy?" Like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's it's nice. It does sound really well done. Yeah, this this yeah. groove, this is so nice. So this is the head groove that you wanted to see, right? Yeah. So yeah, here I actually did everything by hand. Yeah. So I didn't use the groove. Um, are you here? Yeah. yeah. From the groove pool. And here, for example. Yeah. 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 It's... I kept it. Yes. Yeah. This guy had this little tick. Yeah. 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 So I always kept it. Um, here, I, I only use like these small yeah. parts of all these loops. Uh, this is great. I think this way of processing your, your th then then you can put more loops together as like a, a top loop because you're not getting this full. If you, so some students sometimes just drop three full loops in and they don't process it. They just throw the loops and they stack so much frequencies that it gets too full. And I think this way you're creating the space for each loop, you know, because you're just using little elements of it. Exactly. Yeah. For example, when I when I watch the Joko tutorial, um, he he always uses just like one one shots inside the arrangement. Yeah. Like and then he copy pastes that. Yeah. It's like I, I would never do that. I would never come to this idea. You know. Yeah. I always like move. I always create loops, even if I uh, consolidate them like I did here. Yeah. You have some some one shots, and then you just do this, and then yeah. consolidate, then it creates this loop. Yeah. So and then I move these parts that I want to move, like I do it with the warp points, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would never use it like here. It's just like yeah. how Joko works. Is yeah, he works in the arrangement view. Yeah, he copies it there. He starts. Yeah, I've done that as well in the past, but I, I also work more with the automation in the in the loops. But it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's it's so cool to, that there's more ways to do like the similar thing. What I did do sometimes is take little bits of the loop and then reverse that, for instance, you know, and then make a new consolidate with that that version of the of the audio loop, which is pretty cool as well. But yeah, this is, and where's the drum? I want to see the other. There's like this little snare, this little snare that's in between uh, the a little snare. Yeah. Here in the percussive section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that one. This sound, that's I don't know, it just gets this me. one here, yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. 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 yeah then. I I don't know. It's just really, really is a good, you know. Have to push. This one. Yeah, yeah. I really like this sound because it's such a nice like like drum. That's perfect for for a house groove, like a house groove like this, this this percussion. You used yeah. to use uh you used to hear this always in this chemistry. Uh we used to have chemistry in Holland, um uh in the escape. 
And recently I was with my friend Daniel and we were listening to lots of these recordings from, and that's, and you're talking about early 2000s, you know, and they, you hear this, this type of snare a lot in this classic house kind of vibe, which is really nice. So uh, well, well picked, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I actually took it out of the house track. Yeah, it could be. Like, like the old school sample. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. Just cut it out and then used it, you yeah, know, like yeah, even, even like most of the old school tracks, if you look at the waveform, they're, they're not like mastered so like at the compress to the limit. Yeah. So you can you, you can use them in your tracks and they still sound good with a lot of dynamics, yeah. you know? They're very, very gritty. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jo Preitz is online, my friend. I uh, hope you get well soon. Keep on going. This is some inspiration for you, my friend. Um, mm -hmm. And people are asking for the Diva patch because I see <laughs> various. Sorry, guys, if I miss your questions. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, which Diva pat, uh, patch are you using for your bass? Which sound in Diva are you using for bass? Um, for this bass line? Yeah. Um, it's called MK Organ Relaxed. But with really high resonance, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I did a lot of EQing as well. I like these MK kind of things in there. There's a bunch of those uh, in there. Yeah. So I did a lot of processing to that bass line. I, did, I used the, the M bass, um, the R bass, both like plugins that adds a lot of um, frequencies that are missing. For example, I, I added at, the, at uh, 67 hertz added quite a lot there yeah wow they also revised the whole r bass uh thing mm -hmm. looks also different yeah. yeah yeah and this max bass i used a lot in the past it's nice you have two layers that's again you're a layer guy using yeah. the uh the max bass because it gives you two layers again <laughs> <laughs> you need to make a track called layer guy <laughs> yeah you know the, probably it, it's it's my most uh, common tool to get my sound thick or or to add characters, just layering yeah. uh, stuff, you know. Nice. Oh, I, I, see the, I see the Demarzo kick tweaker, which is a nice. Uh, so people can go to the EMC of Demarzo to get that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's good for kick drums, but yeah. I use it for anything basically. Yeah. You know, if you want, it's just an it's just like two EQs set yeah. in a chain where you can uh, like yeah. have these micro parameters that uh, adds or takes takes away at the frequencies that are already mentioned yeah for example if you have a kick in here you want it more boomy you just use this parameter here yeah and well done smart you know yeah. to, to make these these stuff but that's it i see way too uh, less people are actually using the macros you know you can mm -hmm. build your own machines your own devices and save them in your user library and keep them for later you know it's yes. nice but uh yeah cool yeah that's a cool part about the Marzo's channel they uh, upload all these like small um, feature plugins that are really really helpful to to get the workflow mit, bit easier and quicker yeah it's quite cool yeah that's it i've been doing the same now with uh, like i made it a groove last week only using ableton stuff and i put a template up on the gumroad uh, mm -hmm. page and it's nice people actually really like it you know to, to have a starting point to to start making music you know so i think these giving giving the, away these things is is good you know putting them somewhere Definitely, yeah. Of course, for a little donation, you know, people uh, should support uh, should support us as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, nice, uh, cool. I love Diva. You know, it's a uh, it's a great uh, it's a great synth. Uh, Definitely, yeah. Your... Diva probably also one of the plugins that I use the most for yeah. ads and bass lines. Yeah, you know, pads, especially for like old school analog sounding bass lines, yeah. you can use Diva for yeah. sure. Yeah, I have now, I'm now back in my sub-boom bass phase because I got the, the full pack from uh, Sound Education where I teach sometimes as well in Holland. And mm -hmm. they, I said, oh, by the way, we have a surprise. You get the full Explorer bundle from uh, Rob Papa. And I was like, oh, wow, yay. So I got the sub-boom bass back. <laughs> so nice. Like, oh, yeah. Let me just dive in, you know. It's super <laughs> nice basses as well. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, when are you playing? <laughs> when are you coming to Rotterdam? <laughs> we had some contact two days ago about sub. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's my uh, friend Sonny. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, de it depends on the Netherlands and the situation. Yeah. How it's yeah. Um, how it's going with the lockdown laws and stuff, but yeah, hope I hope this summer yeah. um, we can we can dance together in Rotterdam. 
Yeah, like, because how is it in in Berlin now as well? Is it uh, it's also closed? Yeah, it's up similar to Holland, I guess, with the curfew and uh, that sort of stuff. We we don't have a curfew. We had a curfew at Easter, mm -hmm. um, just like from nine uh, in the evening until six in the morning or five in the morning. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, we don't have any curfews. We just have um, restaurants just for takeaway. Um, you you just allowed to meet with a certain amount of people only from one household and yeah, yeah and most of the stuff is still closed or if you want to go to the hairdresser or to uh, any shop you need an appointment and you need a negative test oh wow to yeah. the hairdresser even yeah for the hairdresser as well you need the negative test but you can buy these um self uh like the self tests yeah we also started doing that well them in holland <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh so you need to say so but you don't have to go to the hairdresser right you look uh you look uh super uh super nice how you call it super neat <laughs> <laughs> maybe some colors sooner or later i get gray already but yeah um. well man it looks uh it looks really good on you uh, <laughs> So, oh, Dino is here as well. Let's see. Is this project is mastered or minus 60 dB? John DeLuke. Uh, no, I just put a limiter on there. It's not mastered. Yeah. I just put it on there to turn up the volume. It was the pre-master. So you never mix through stuff? Some people mix through uh, saturators. I like to mix through the PSP Vintage Farmer. I've been doing that since... Uh, since like. You mean you put it on the master? I put it on the master, yeah. Slight dry wet. Uh, because okay. I really like the PSP Vintage Farmer sound. I have it on my tracks for many years. I don't know. I really like it. I don't know. I mean, if if you know the the um, the, the guys who master your stuff, they they probably do the same thing with analog stuff. You know. Yeah. So I I always try to when I do the pre master and I know who is the the mastering guy. For example, most of my latest releases, the um, Rob Small yeah. did the mastering. Yeah, I know. And he always does a splendid job with with the really good stuff so i i i i prefer to to not put anything on there than just an eq or yeah, something. yeah that's true i've been cheating a bit because i i left it on a lot um not always but i left it on a lot because i just liked it so much i was like oh, mm -hmm. i want to keep that <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you know actually i googled it yesterday or the day before mm -hmm. i was like oh you know I've, i've been so old the psp vintage warmer what year do you think the psp vintage warmer was made and i don't know 93 <laughs> <laughs> no it's 2000 2001 when it's like one of the really? first yeah one of the first plugins that i had myself back then i don't even have it the vintage warmer oh it's nice yeah i have yeah. it already for many many years and it's and i was like <laughs> checking out it's like 20 years so it's ridiculous uh so hey what, what is your um oh, you have the silent i made a silent pack today actually on my gum road so oh, yeah, yeah silence is good. pretty cool yeah i like it Yeah, silence is great. Sounds also very analog. Also one of the first ones. If we, mm -hmm. you know, it's really nice. Yeah, well, one of my first plugins ever, I think, was silence. Yeah, mine as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. And also Rob Small, man. I'm going to ask him to come on the show. Why not get a mastering guy? Because yeah, I, I've played with him in Amsterdam, like in um, the Korsakov of all places, which is a really tiny, or it used to be an old rock cafe, but there were these parties. Uh, uh, yeah, it's also like, I think, 12 years ago. And then he's, just started his we were both on soul man music and mm -hmm. then he just started his uh his uh, mix it mastering company so i sent him some some people i knew that had labels like oh yeah ask him this guy is starting out new and look at him now it's like <laughs> doing like the you know how does he have time for anything he's, he's so busy doing everybody's mixes and mastering <laughs> you it's know crazy yeah yeah, uh -huh. yeah. have you ever d done something on soul man back in the day like um soul man music so man music yeah like hector koto was on there and yeah oh yeah, yeah. probably in the beginning yeah. of my c uh, career i don't know how far this is away maybe eight years ago yeah eight or maybe maybe even ten i think ten years maybe ago, even yeah. ten years yeah, yeah. With a, di, 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 with a lo loco this guy loco this yeah it's nice classic uh label man yeah. so it's south, yeah. south america yeah back in the days it was this kind of percussive tech house yeah sound yeah. which was super big you know yeah. yeah i think yeah i think like 10 years ago could be yeah that's really interesting so i thought maybe you've also uh but, but that was then before uh 
before you were Sydney Charles. <laughs> 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 so there's no alias. Or maybe maybe there's another alias <laughs> <laughs> that we don't know about. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, so we know that. Uh, how do you create the structure of your tracks? Simon Garcia, what a great question. You mean the arrangement? Yeah. Do you arrange through session view or do you just uh, puzzle it, puzzle your way through? I don't know. I, I'm, I just start in the session view mostly to, um, to just get uh, the basic idea going. Yeah. And then as soon as I have a cool idea, I just record like, uh, uh, like a 16 bar loop and then I, I like to add more ideas because um, I also work very visually so I can see for example there's some space in the MIDI um, in the MIDI channel yeah. then I'd like mm -hmm. to add maybe another bass line that fills up these gaps yeah. uh, do the same with like uh, percussions, percussive sounds and um, yeah and then I start with the arrangement so yeah, mostly um, this is actually kind of a, a bit more different arrangement than I, no I normally do um, because you have these kick drum and bass line like going in in the in the main break. Yeah. So normally in the main break, I, I just have um, no no low end uh, playing at all. Yeah. And then just, yeah, going in filtered. super dry. Yeah. But yeah, I. Um, Mostly, I want to have like 16 or, or, or 32 bars of um, ideas that I like, that, that sounds really well all together. Yeah. And then I always um, like put things away and see how it sounds without this one or just solo this sound with a groove, I solo this sound with a groove. And then, um, yeah, I kind of... Uh, build the track in my head for example I know uh, this sound sounds super cool alone with the groove so when the drop comes I just want to get all the pads out all the chords out and just want to have this lead sound uh, alone with the groove going Yeah. and then what I like to do is I already built the main break in the beginning Yeah. so when I just have like this part I take um, the first 16 um like kick drum, 16 bars, kick drum, bass line off and just build the first, like the main break in the beginning. And then I put it like somewhere in the middle, I don't know, mostly at like 97 bars. Yeah. And then I build everything around this main break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. then I, I copy paste like the groove to the beginning and then like build small breaks in between try to find out when I, I put the bass line in and then I do the same thing after the main break. Yeah, yeah. And how uh, how did this one come together? Was it a fast arrangement? You know, it feels like this track really flowed out of you uh, if I listen to it. But Or is it, uh, uh, I hope the arrangement, arrangement wasn't uh, like the organ, you know, so much processing or so much time uh, spent on it. How, how did it go? Normally, I don't have problems with the arrangement at all. Like in, in this uh, in this case with the Organica track, it really came out super fluently because I, I knew I wanted to have it very housey. So there's not a lot of buildups or like big um, like drum rolls or, no. or something like that. So it's just like super basic um, yeah, pattern based and kind of all, all is all is super tight. I, I, I mostly let the bass line um, played it through the whole time only not only not in this part but all the other parts are just you can hear the bass line and the breaks as well yeah yeah so it's it's very it's a very fluent housey track so the, the arrangement was was not hard at all yeah very cool yeah nice um yeah what do we have more now the tracks are gonna come in oh it's uh i'll save this one for later from john deluxe we're at heavy house society if you're mm -hmm. accepting demos at the moment well let's do it let's just take it so okay. Are you ac accepting demos for Heavy House? Yeah, uh, sure, all the time. You can send me um, music all the time. I'm always listening to stuff. That's good to hear because I bet uh, a lot of people will have demos. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, can you show us the breakdown session section? Yeah, maybe play the breakdown session for a bit because there's also a filter, right, on the break. Uh, it's it's nice to to not have to not stop all the percussive elements. Uh, yes, and just um, 
uh, yeah, just have something rhythmical going on. Do you always have something uh, uh, like that, that you have like a percussive ele element going? Because I've, I recently made a new idea and I Oops. actually stopped for the first time since a long time, everything just except the vocal and the pad. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but then your whole room stands still, you know? So I was talking to Kreuziger about this. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's, we usually don't do it. You know, yeah. it has to be really good if you do it. What are your thoughts about this? Well, it, it's, it depends what you want to achieve, you know? I think if you have like just the vocal playing and the pad, it's just very catchy, you know? Yeah. And the, the more you take out, um, then when the drop comes, when everything comes in, the more... Uh, of course, the more um, contrast, or, uh, the more contrast the yeah. drop is to yeah. what you had before. So yeah, it, it really depends on what you achieve. But I, I in this case, I think I, I'd really like to um, to create a big mood with um, this organ sound that uh, build that uh, I, I really like to build up the sound. So it just came in step by step. And I wanted to people to just concentrate on that and not get like distracted by any other sounds. Yeah. So when you listen to the breakdown, it's just the pad and the organ sound playing. Yeah. But I didn't give everything. I just like these two notes. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And then here. When the kick comes in, I... I came in with the next part. Yeah. And then the next part comes in. But still there's no percussion playing at all. The main break. Now here the clap comes in. We have four clap layers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, groove, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> that groove is so nice, it's especially this little snare drum. But it's nice to see that you extended the break such a long time and really slowly build it up with adding more of the organ. And yeah, it's it's cool, man. It's such a such a strong track. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, there's there are not a lot of elements musically. You know, no. it's just these parts. It's the organ part, and then I have like these strings and pads playing. You know, and yeah. like this pad uh, sample that plays uh, different um, musical rhythms. And yeah. this is more like the, the rhythmic uh, part of the pad. Together with the um, filter being played, LFO. But the rest is like, it's very basic. So it's just about taking things away and adding things, you yeah. know, to make yeah. this, the whole... Um, the, the whole uh, track gets interesting just by taking away and adding musical parts, you know, yeah, yeah. and then adding some as well uh, with the groove. You know, it's a very basic house groove, actually. Um, looks like it's it's very complex, but it's not, you it's know. Not, that does remind me a lot about house lesson, like also similar, like also you had the string in the break, you know, it was a very, very straightforward house tune, like well mm -hmm. constructed. And I, I think like these tracks how many tracks do you have in total on this uh this project like how many uh tracks is it like also s i don't know 45, 45 I yeah think. with the groups in there so you know group processing yeah, yeah. interesting yeah. yeah it's super well well uh well done like really well dosed everything you know it's nice <laughs> good to see uh let's see what do we uh is there's more uh okay shall we do more questions yeah, sure. Yeah, then uh, let's see. Uh, this one we had. Uh, any tips on writing bass lines? Yeah. Besides the sequencer ideas. Um, well, I think just like what I mostly do is I jam around with um, the, um, the Ableton Push. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's lovely. It's just my my favorite. With the, the sequencer part, also, do you the, the sequencer um, 
compose sections, let's say, that you can like sequence it, uh, where you press layout twice on the... Ah, no, I don't do that. Okay, I just yeah. uh, press record and I, I try to find a cool rhythm and then I, I record it into MIDI. Yeah. And, and then, um, yeah, I, I just uh, I just try to find then the part that sounds really cool. Yeah. And sometimes what I also like to do, I, I create um three layers of bass lines but with different bass line sounds yeah. and then yeah. i just afterwards copy paste the same pattern and yeah. see which sound sounds better uh together with the kick drum and sometimes i even keep all three bass lines and just uh play different parts for example the first bass line just placed here and yeah. then you have this small part placed by the second one and then goes back to the first one yeah. and then yeah. it it creates a really cool dynamic and movement. Yeah, it's a bit like the question and answer that they, they start to have a conversation together, uh, these guys, you know? Yeah, yeah. man, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, nice, that's a great way of working. I love Push, my parents are sending me to Push because I've dropped all my stuff, all my studio stuff and my parents and now I've sort of have my, my place here. They're gonna mm -hmm. send it over. So my package will be here, I think after the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and now it's being shipped well. So then it's, uh, then it arrives well. And mm -hmm. then I can use the push again. I think it's a great, uh, a great thing. It's not just because I'm a certified guy or whatever with Ableton, but yeah. I just really like the workflow. I, I always have it on my desk. And also just to record some automation, you can map your, your uh, knobs to it. Do you do that as well? Like record uh, automation with these things or are you more draw them in? Uh, how does that flow usually? Uh, I mostly draw them in only um, if I, I want to have some cool filter movements. I mostly um, put it, put the filter onto one knob, and then let it play and record. Yeah, um, yeah record it like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. mostly, I actually, I draw it in with the mouse. Yeah, nice, mm -hmm. like like working at a bank again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great job, though. You know, if you have a good chair. Yeah, and sometimes also I, I draw a lot, but I with the filter sometimes you have a sound, and I sometimes I use an LFO, but then it goes. It does them too much what I don't want. So then I yeah. like, you know what? I'm just gonna play the whole track. It's a good moment to listen to the full track, and then use the just use the filter the whole track. You know, and then then you actually get a full jam, but only on that filter, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it does take a, a bit of time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, uh, let's see, uh, how do you write? What, how do you write in your synth melodies? Is that a similar like uh, structure with the push or do you um, use a sequencer? Or? Mostly with the push, yeah. I, it's um, in this case, in the um, Organica track, um, I just try to um, build up um, the sound by um, creating two different, as you can see here, two different channels of the same synth. Yeah. And then yeah. I just like played this one, you know, like this, this two notes, din, dun. And then I was like thinking, what, what can, what could sound cool in addition to that? And then Play around. Um, I, I, I draw it in the, uh, those ones. But these ones I actually did with um, with the mouse. And I wanted to find out like what sounds cool to these two sounds. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, yeah. and yeah, and then um, um, I just wanted to see what sounds cool together, you know? Yeah, and just to have a, a fiddle around. And, and do you then work in a certain scale or do you, do you just, uh, you don't have the scale uh, on, on, uh, on push? Yeah, I have always had the scale on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that works better because then you know where. Yeah, even though I'm not, I'm not musically trained, uh, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I would be lost if I don't know. Oh, somebody actually asked it. Do you always write your songs in minor, or minor or major, or do you sometimes use lesser known scales or modes? Mm, mostly minor, especially for this like deep kind of sounds. I think major doesn't work. No. It just sounds. Yeah, the chords just sound too happy and not, not deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I think 90% of uh, electronic music is, if you look on Beatport, like all my lists are, <laughs> it's all like um, minor mostly, you know, or you get yes. a happy defected in the house track could also, uh, you know, like. Uh, yeah, if, if you have some like big uh, happy chord stuff going on, probably it's it's in major, Yeah. but I think most of the underground music is, is in minor. It's in minor, yeah. I think so yeah. too. Like if, if you look at all these um, sample packs from sample market from, all these different artists when you go on uh, pads 
uh, musical elements is mostly all in minor. Yeah. Did you yeah. do a, a sample pack for uh, PIV already or is it coming? I did one. I did oh, yeah. uh, a sample pack oh, yeah, for did, yeah, yeah, sample did. markets. Yeah, that's true. Sample markets. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Can show you some loops. Nice. And it's all from the hardware, of course. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. That must have been fun to do. Yes, yeah, a lot of. Um, I, I actually worked like two months non-stop on this pack. It was really oh, wow. a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. But it's good though, and it's nice because you probably worked a lot with the hardware. Yes. Nice pad. But it, uh, it was also during the lockdown, so I had a lot of time. So I did the yeah. sample pack. I think sample packs making are is a great thing during lockdowns and also to uh to get to know your hardware, you know. If you're if you have hardware, I think if you want to get to know it, just make some sounds with it, you know. This is how I uh, learned my electron. I had my electron for like a year and I didn't use it, you know, and I was like, oh yeah, I just recorded it a bit and I was like, okay, now I'm just gonna make sounds like yeah. the whole day. And just by the idea of just freaking out and just recording stuff for later, it gave me a lot of fun basically to learn the interface of the device. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, especially with Electron. Yeah. You know, in the beginning you you're just like, okay, what what should I do now with all the knobs <laughs> yeah. and okay, like and, then then you have the option button which like kind of like every knob has another option yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. So it, it took me a while. Yeah. 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 It's so so many um um opportunities with this little gadget. It's crazy, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. if you have time to go through it, it can can really uh and get you to the next level production wise and also having fun making music i think yeah and, exactly. and drums yeah and it's all fun you can sit with it on the couch with your headphone plug in that's how i did it at some point like okay i'm just gonna sit on the couch and try to make a full track with it and that's same how i learned push i was well not on the couch because you need your computer but i was sitting behind it and trying to use my push as much as i could and not use the mouse in order to really get to know the features you know like what can you do with this and I think that's uh, that's the best way to to start learning uh, learning something, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you recommend to use drum loops or kick plus stop loops? Sometimes I don't know how to use drum loops because I have a lot of elements already. What kick loops are? Uh, do you recommend to use drum loops or kick plus stop loops? Sometimes I don't know how to use drum loops because uh, I yeah. I, I've never used um, loops Wait that okay. have uh, all the frequencies mixed together. No, I don't like it. No, like, it's a bit it's a bit like how you showed it actually, right? Using the yeah. the the volume, the clip gain automation. Uh, yes. Yeah. But do you also it's the selecting of the of the loops then? Uh, like okay. Yeah, and, and and what you do with it in general, I I simply. Like I think it's boring if you just use the loop and you just keep it how it is, you know. Yeah. You always you always want to to change it, especially if you if you want to achieve a sound which is, um, yes, special or or you, you know. Yeah. Because most of the people nowadays they have these the same sample pack like you have probably. Yeah. So if you use the the loop like this, you can 100% be sure someone else will, will do the same, you know. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, if you want to sound unique, you, you should always try to work with the samples with your, in, in your own way. Yeah, use some processing, throw through a vocoder or do whatever trick you need to do. Reverse some stuff, pitch it down, stretch it out, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or the frequency shifter is really cool. Frequency shifter is also cool, yeah, yeah. 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 It's nice to have LFO that a bit, that it goes up and down a bit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, we can do this for hours. All right, uh, let's see. Um, how long do you need to learn an electron device? Depends on how much time you spend. But for electron, I guess you need a few months for, uh, especially Octatrack, or mm -hmm. uh, they just have so much uh, like menus and menus. But once you you master it, it's a great great tool to have actually. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so uh, two more questions, and then uh, we call it a day. <laughs> cool, man. Sure. Um, let's say. Um, uh, I saw somebody ask about your drum bus. What's your drum bus processing? Do you process the whole drum group as a whole a lot? Yes, I do it all the time, actually. Uh, in this case, um, I use some um, saturation. I did this. Um, uh, slate. Is it Slate? Uh, J37. It's like a 
tape modulation oh, yeah. plugin. Yeah. And I added quite a lot of saturation here. And it really like gives this old school sound to to this to the whole drums. I really wanted to have this dirtiness inside. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't do a lot, but in the end, in the high ends, it, it cuts a bit of the really harsh high ends off. Yeah. So it, it sounds more uh, yeah, more old school, a bit more analog if you have all these super high frequencies yeah. away, you know? Um I added the drum pass, what I which I normally never do to be honest. I love the drum pass, <laughs> it's my go-to one actually, yeah. But yeah, it's it really does um it really does only a little difference, really, really little difference. This adds a little bit of drive. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I like to use it on the kick drum rather than on my drum bus, actually. Yeah, it adds a lot of the boom is great, but also like deadly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, and then I, I always use, I like to use the API compressor for, um, for punchiness in the, kick, in, in the, in the drums. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's doing. It's not doing much. It's only taking like a few d dBs off, right? Like a sort of a glue compression, maybe. Yes. Yeah. I think. I think it's always about a lot of small steps that, in the end, add up to something good. You yeah, know. I agree. So yeah. if if you have one plugin and it does a lot, you really have to be careful yeah. with adding more plugins. So yeah, I always use plugins doing small things, and then again, I I do. Um, parallel compression for the drum group as well yeah and i also add um uh one two three four five one two three four five this one um reverb to the whole drum group yeah i really like to use this uh Tap filter, huh? Yeah, I Why love the filter. This? Yeah, oh, yeah, I had this as well sometimes when I was uh, sharing. <laughs> That's strange. It never happens yeah. normally. Yeah. On this screen, it's big, and when yeah. I put it here, it's small. Anyways, yeah. so I like to use um, the Pro R yeah. Um, yeah. reverb. Uh, yeah, I mostly, I, I choose a cool preset, but I always, for my drums, bring down the stereo width so it sounds a bit more mono rather than too stereo. Yeah. And quite a small room, mostly. I, I, I don't like if my drums are super, like, um, spread out with, with reverbs. Yeah. I know. Sometimes it's it's cool to add that to a clap, to have some more characteristic to the clap. Yeah, depends but, on the track. Yeah. 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 But mostly my drums have a really small uh, room. Reverb, yeah. So this is the room full on. Yeah. Yeah. Then... I've seen that, like it's some something like 500 milliseconds of uh, DK DK time, 450. Yeah. So usually the small reverb. Yeah, nice. This is a bigger room, yeah. slightly bigger room. That's that I think I use this one for the clap. This one. Yeah, this is slightly, slightly <laughs> yeah, <goes> bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one point two six seconds or so. Yeah, it's nice. I also have small, medium, and big verbs always. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what you said about the the small steps, you know, that's that's exactly it. Because if you if you can see if you can hear this little bit, you know, I usually close my eyes, turn the plugin off and on and off and on, so I don't know if it's on or off. And yeah. then I just turn it on and then I look, I open my eyes and if it's off, that means like, okay, this is, this is bullshit. <laughs> and if it's on, I'm like, yeah, this is better. Okay. Keep it. You know, it's nice. Something that, uh, Yaron, uh, my friend always says like, yeah, just close your eyes, keep clicking until you don't know if it's on or off and then check yourself before you wreck yourself with these things, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, uh, also, I always, um, group, um, my drums into like highs, perks and claps. Yeah. And then I also um, affect, um, yeah, the highs, for example. Uh, the Abbey Road vinyl. I, Is that the vinyl? Oh, wow. I use the Abbey Road saturator. saturator. It really yeah. adds, because I don't want this um, saturator uh, also affect the clap and the perks. So I just put it on the high. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. That's a nice brightness. It can really add a lot of harshness. Yeah, but also the same like with the whole drum group. I always like to just add very small 
preferences. Yeah. And same I did for the clap. Added some drive, glue compressor. So I, I always like um, have a group of claps, have a group of perks, have a group of highs that I... Um, where I do some uh, processing, group yeah, processing, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. um, I group. Um, I do some processing on the whole drums as well, but totally different approach then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. I do the same. I have well, not. This, I have my. Uh, so I divide it up in my drums or my hi hats, hats and hi. I call it. These are my rides and shakers and hats. Mm -hmm. And then I have my clap and snares usually, and then the rest of the percussion. You know and. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I should find a better. I saw I should find a better way for processing all my uh, my uh, top loops, and maybe I should use more top loops. That's, <laughs> that's my takeaway. <laughs> oh, nice. actually, I, I saw I, I grew. I did another group just to add this FX oh, vintage to, exciter. I used, used this a lot. This this guy can go crazy if you crank the output. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was also really good to thicken up like nine or nine heads. Yeah. Yeah, if you yeah. have if you have a really thin 909 head that you don't like, you just put this exciter on it, and it really can make the deal. I had this years ago. I used it a lot, and it's really can it's really adding a lot of nice upper harmonics, like in the, especially in the highs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, one more question. Uh, that was the what effects are you using for your pads? Somebody asked. Oh. And for, of so I don't know how to say it. it's a lot of abbreviations <laughs> mostly um let me check for this pad here so this is actually a sample as you can see yeah it's from a pro recorded from a prophet f major seven um and then just play these different notes with a really long release yeah and um, I put some chorus on there. Always chorus, yeah. And I use um, the Ozone Imager to add some stereo um, image as well. It looks so some so, stereo width. It looks so different than when I use it. Yeah. Is this a different view of this, the vector scope or something? Uh, I don't know. This looks different. I think this is actually the, the mastering. Oh, yeah, you get the um, whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Master assistant, but when you turn off the equalizer and maximizers, then you just oh, have the yeah. imager. Yeah, oh, cool. I need to check it because I also have the elements bundle. Yeah, I need to check it out. so especially with like long sounds with um, like pads, strings, um, for my tracks, I always like to have them spread out to the sides rather than too much in the middle where yeah. I already have my drums or my um, like more steppy sounds. And yeah, make so it nice and lush and wide. Yeah, exactly. So a bit softer, lusher. That's why I use chorus, uh, stereo width, and some reverb as well. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, nice. Well, then we've we've done it for two hours. Uh, <laughs> Crazy already, two hours. It's two hours. <laughs> yeah, this goes fast, man. And the uh, questions always. Are, are popping in people even asking if you want to make some music from the scratch but guys we're going to give it give it a uh we're going to make it end to this it's nice though <laughs> <laughs> uh, sydney I'm, I'm super thankful man for sharing this um is there anything Pleasure, man. is there anything you want to plug uh, in the end i saw um uh speedy j always does this in the end of this show is there mm -hmm. anything you want to plug uh besides of course the the dermazzo tutorials maybe your sample pack for a sample market, uh, anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, well, maybe just um, maybe just my label. Um, if you are uh, like have cool music, always uh, open to listen to stuff. Um, have really good music coming out there soon. EPs from um, Hans Hannes from Joko, yeah. from um, Dennis Quinn, uh, Million, uh, Andrew Zara, Alex Sanero. Um, so if, if you think your music can fit the sound, like I always um, really uh, open to listen to stuff and find new talents. M maybe this is something um, I really put a lot of work in at the moment. Yeah, nice. And a heavy house uh, society. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll also send you some music. I think me and Ari, we finished like eight tracks. We got like cool, 19 man. coming. So it's uh, lockdown music. <laughs> so nice. it's nice. I'll also ship some over. 
uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It, again, it's super nice that uh, that you were uh, you, that you were on the show. Uh, I've learned a lot. I hope you guys as well. Um, oh yeah, how to send demos? Well, probably on the on the Facebook page of uh, Heavy House Society. Yeah, Facebook or Instagram is also cool. No yeah. problem. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, check that out, guys. The recording will be posted. Uh, that's for everybody that's checking out. It's going to be on uh, Lessons in Life, uh, youtube.com slash Lessons in Life. You'll find the ones with, uh, with Joko as well. So you can, uh, you can actually check that out. I can actually show you here. Uh, there is a lot with Joko, Aaron Volta, Josh Butler, and way more, uh, as well as some tutorials. So if you're not, uh, if you don't have, uh, if you haven't learned enough already, then you can <laughs> continue there. Or of course, go to the DeMarzo EMC where Sydney uh, also has his uh, tutorials and the other guys. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, see you uh, at the next one. I think next week I have Van there, who's uh, who's more in the uh, organic house section. So let's see what he has to tell. And yeah, Sydney, thank you so much for being uh, being on the show. And Pleasure, uh, man. we'll uh, we'll see each other soon. I hope everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>